And now, to introduce the performance and the director, may I invite Sri Rajiv Chandran, a close associate of the Nati Rich Dance Company, a media professional, an art financier, and partner of, Pad of Padmashri Gita Chandran on the stage. Sri Rajiv Chandran. It's really a pleasure for Gita Chandran and her Nati Richa Dance Company to be here at the Jindal Global University, especially in its 10th anniversary during this year. And we would also especially like to thank the Office of Student Life and Cultural Engagement, Dr. Upasna Mahanta and, Dr. and Gargi Bharadwaj for just being the best hosts that we've had in a very long time. So it's really a pleasure to be here. A round of applause for the organizers for this evening. Celebrated artist, star performer, Geeta Chandran skillfully weaves abstract notions of joy, beauty, values, aspirations, myth, and spirituality in each of her presentations. Founder president of Natya Vriksha, Geeta is also artistic director of the Natya Vriksha Dance Company. In her effort to endance the universe, Gita engages in a strategic range of dance-related activities, performing, teaching, conducting, singing, collaborating, organizing, writing, and speaking to new youth audiences. Her niche interests include environmental protection, gender equity and equality issues, hygiene and promoting a better toilet use culture in India, arts education and being a spokesperson for larger cultural issues that affect all artists. She's a member on several school and college boards and on many Government of India committees. She was awarded the prestigious Padma Shri in 2007, the Sangeet Natak Academy Award in 2016, and became a Tagore National Fellow 2017-2018. This evening, Gita and her Nata Riksha Dance Company bring to you one of their most prestigious performances, Anekanta. Anekanta says that no one thing is true. It could be true, and other ideas too could be true. So this statement admits of many dimensions. Anekanta thus celebrates multiplicity. It believes that we have to abandon the notion that there can only be a single way at approaching issues. Cult from Jaina philosophy, and it's amazing that this performance is happening today on Mahavir Jayanti, Anekanta's Mool Mantra embraces different spheres, cultural, political, social, and economic, and in every aspect of life and living, diversity has to be enshrined. Its core concept is that there are multiple interpretations of a universal truth, but that each version is as true as the other. Dancer Gita Chandran, through Ane Kanta, the production, finds an artistic way to represent these basic tenets of Jaina philosophy. And her performance addresses many of these issues, suggesting ways to adopt this philosophy to all aspects of life. Thus, the choreography celebrates Ane Kanta through exploring opposites, rhythm and silence, through concepts of convergence and divergence and abstraction of musical notes and ragas. The choreography has also established the philosophy by exploring the inner and outer dwanda conflicts, both real and imagined, and questions many such instances and contexts that presents the cosmic view of interrelatedness in existence. 
and encompass the result of a long collaborative process, as Dhamsa Gita Chandran led it from conceptualization to its manifestation into choreographies, spanning over a period of six months, beginning with a scholarly dialogue of the dancer with the renowned Jaina scholar Sudamahi Raghunathan, and gradually progressing into creating the exclusive musical dance compositions for the performances with singer K. Venkateshwaran and accompanying artists from across the country. Anekanta opens with Tridhara. As I said before, the key concept of Anekanta is multiplicity and that there are many ways of looking at a single thing. The ubiquitous Alarippu, which always marks the beginning of any Bharatanatyam recital, is often treated as a mandatory piece merely marking the beginning. But for Anekanta, Gita has put a dizzy spin on the piece, based on Karekuri Shivakumar's rhythmic genius. Gita has choreographed the Tishram Alaripu in three variations that happen simultaneously. While dancers retain their individual identities by maintaining their respective variations of the Tala through the piece, Anekanta is brought out when they all unite in the summer or the very first beat of the Tala cycle. The choreography involves a lot of brisk walking steps showing the variations of pace. When pace changes, there is a quickening of the human pulse. Yet all those changes happen within the larger matrix of the underlying Tishragate. Gita's Tridhara showcases Anekanta, a frame within a frame, if you wish, that highlights multiple ways of viewing and experiencing things. The dancers this evening, lead dancer, Padmashri Gita Chandran, with dancers of the Nati Riksha Dance Company, Sneha Chakradhar, Divya Saluja, Amrita Shruti Radha Krishnan, Radhika Kathal, Madhura Bhrushundi, and Shruta Sharat Gopalan. Our lighting director, Sharat Kulshreshta, and our technical assistant, Archana Shivan. Please welcome Gita Chandran and the Nati Vishwa Dance Company in Pradhara, showcasing Anekanta.
that other disciplines like philosophy, ritual, religion, myth, ancient texts, poetry, literature, art, both painting and sculpture, cultural studies, yoga, handicrafts and handlooms, and beauty and aesthetics. The Nativature Dance Company is unique in that all its dancers have been entirely trained in Bharatanatyam by Gita Chandran, who is also artistic director of the company. Since the dancers have literally grown up together from very young childhood, the level of trust and togetherness evident in the company's choreographies ensures a completely different emotional appeal. The dance company has forged a reputation for its high-octane, crisp, and mature dance presentations. It has performed widely to rave reviews and has consistently set high standards for group performances. Nativriksha's vision statement seeks to probe the continuing relevance of classical tradition in a world of changing values. It showcases the aesthetics of Bharatanatyam and its history, and how the tenets of the dance can be employed as a means of communicating issues of contemporary concern, even while exploring linkages between history and continuity, between external body and internal mind space, between yesterday and tomorrow, between artist and audience, between roots and wings. Anekanta continues with Jati Vistara. This segment explores Anekanta through opposites, rhythm and silence. In a single phrase, the choreography employs beats and silence in different variations. This is then followed by a crisp and crackling jati, a bold sequence, delivered in various imaginations and rhythmic combinations. Jati Vistara highlights how the same shulli or bowl can be played with to create a harmonious whole through different approaches to rhythm, beat, and silence. Jati Vistara. Thank <laughs> you. 
ಹೋಗಿ ಜಂ ತಕ ರೂಂ ರೂಂ ತಕ ದಿಂ ದಿಂ 
taka jam, taka nam, taka rom, taka di, taka adi, taka taka rat, taka 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 Tak, 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 tak,
The third piece this evening is dedicated to the concept of Vyakta and Avyakta, exploring what is said and what is not said, what is tangible and what is not. Gita interrogates the twin concepts of form and formlessness, of Saguna and nirguna in Indian philosophy. Based on a composition of Muttaswami Dikshitar, the renowned Carnatic music composer, Maya opens with how Maya illusion grips one and the pleading with the deity, lord, supreme abstract energy to assist in releasing from Maya's steely grasp. The choreography establishes the inner and outer dwanda, conflicts both external and internal, real and imagined, of the vyakta and the avyakta, the tangible and the intangible. Mind. Tak 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 t
The finale this evening is Griha Bheda. In this piece, Anekanta is explored through music. It spotlights how the transposition of one note changes the entire tonal quality and eventually the melody raga itself. Through Griha Bheda, one thus plays with the note. What happens when Sa becomes Re? That is when Re becomes Sa. This progression creates a whole melody which is associated with different emotions, creating an aural anekanta through music, which then Gita has conceptualized and choreographed in dance. Griha Bheda 
a finale to our Anekanta presentation this evening at the Jindal Global University. Anekanta. Sari ma ba da sa da ba ba re sa da 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 sa sa ga ba ba ni sa ni pa ma ga sa ni 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 sa sa ri ga ba da sa da ba ga ni sa da 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 sa Sani da ba ga sa ni sa ga ma ga ni sa 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 ni sa. Sari ma ba da sa da ba ma ni sa da sa da sa sa ga ma ba ni sa ni ba ma ga sa ni sa ni sa. Sari ga ba da 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 ba da ni sa da 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 sa. Sani da ba da sa ni sa da ma da ni sa 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 ni sa. Sari ma ba da sa da ba ba ni sa da sa da sa. Sa ga ma ba ni sa ni ba ma ga sa ni 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 sa. Sa ri ga ba da sa da ba ga ni sa da 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 sa. Sa ni da ba ga sa ni sa ga ma da ni sa ni sa.
Sita Chandran with her Nati Briksha Dance Company. I would like to introduce the dancers, the baby of our company, Saumya Lakshmi Narayanan. 
Shruta Sharat Gopalan, Madhura Bhushundi, Radhika Patel, Amrita Shruti Radha Krishnan, Divya Saluja, Sneha Chakradhar, and our choreographer and lead dancer, Padmashri Gita Chandran. <laughs> Additional credit, Sharat Kulshreshta Lalit, Archana Shivan Technical Assistance and Additional Felicitation, Facilitation Shreya Dua. The dancers once again, the Nati Richard Dance Company. We were told by the department that there would be a question and answer session. So, would you like to lead that? Upasana, please come. Yes. Could we have the house lights? Thank you. That's nice. Interaction is better. Thank you. I, I am at a loss of words. Um, I, I, I don't know how to express our deepest gratitude um, to Padma Shri Grita Chandran and the Natya Viksha Company for this truly mesmerizing and riveting performance. Thank you so very much. Can we have one big round of applause once again, please? Thank you. Uh, you've, you've made us experience this performance in Bharat Natyam in ways I think never imagined or explored before. So thank you so very much for this beautiful experience. Hello, madam. Uh, it was like uh, eye soothing for us for having you on stage and watching us so live. Uh, my name is Naveen and I would like to ask a question. Uh, normally in classical dance forms, we have got females more into it and hardly we have got any males. So what is your viewpoint on that? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, male dancers have been very much part of classical dance in some forms. There have been more male dancers than in others. Bharatanatyam, we've always had male dancers ever since Rukmini Amma democratized the style, Rukmini Devi Arundel. Uh, Kathak has always had a tradition of uh, male dancers. Satriya has male dancers. Now, I think the best male dancers, even in Odissi, are male dancers. Kathagali was always done by men, We're never done by women. So I think the gender thing has really never been an issue in dance, uh, it's only the talent. But the compositions in Bharatanatyam, I must say, are largely uh, naika oriented or uh, uh, women centric. So it's now only that we've started um, discovering pieces specifically for the male, particularly poetry. And what is interesting is most of these naika padams were written by men, imagining themselves to be women. So it's very complex, uh, and I think only now we've started discussing these things, writing about it, and uh, interrogating some of the traditions that we've been handed down. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have more questions? Thank you for this absolutely wonderful presentation. Um, I uh, heard um, the description, uh, you know, during one of the chapters, say that um, the presentation looks back to the past and to the future and uh, integrates both both roots and flight. So I wanted to ask whether um, you know what you have performed for us um, brings in elements from outside of Bharatnatyam or uh, basically you know uh, moves. Um, hidden elements of Bharatanatyam in new ways. That's it. 
after dancing for maybe 40 years at the risk of giving, giving away my age, um, my, dan my body really can't do anything else but Bharatanatyam. So I think all these spines that you see, whatever they do, it will smack of Bharatanatyam. So we can't really get out of Bharatanatyam. Yet, the important thing is that this concept was the key and we needed to address the concept in all its facets possible. So music guided us and the bowls guided us to a great degree. And I think we just matched that with fitting body movements. We've not moved out of the vocabulary at all. When we say something old, the form is very old, but we have tried to give it a new aesthetic. It was, that was the biggest challenge because, you know, anything that is old, there is a visual memory and people think Bharatanatyam should look a certain way. The outfits should be a certain way. The composition should be a certain way. To break from that and to give it a new aesthetic was a challenge. Not just the visual aesthetic, but also the movement aesthetic. Uh, so that, and essentially one must understand that Bharatanatyam is a solo dance form. So the way it is taught, the pedagogy, everything is geared towards the solo. To break from that, to come into the group format and to say what we had to say. And one of the compositions that you saw, Muttu Swami Dikshitar's compositions, is a very old composition. And we took it to a very contemporary way of interpreting that composition in the context of an Ekantha. So it was a question of putting various things from various quarters into what we wanted for this production. I don't know whether I've answered your question. If I may uh, add to that, since I've been an onlooker to this process, uh, Bharatanatyam really belongs to the Sanatan. That's its parameters. But in reaching out to Jaina philosophy, using a Jaina scholar, a different point of view, a thought process of uh, openness that the Jaina philosophy brought uh, alive. And then to interpret that with a Sanatan dance, you know, without being boxed in. I think that has been part of the larger dialogue in this. I think it's for the first time that the Jaina philosophy entered Bharatanatyam through this production. And it's ancient, so you know, like we say, Rishi Munis in the past. Who are the Munis? The Munis were the Jainas. So it's an old tradition. It's simultaneous with the flow of, uh, of history here in India. But we've never reached out and integrated and, and built that hyphen. So I think this is also a step towards that. So uh, roots and wings, it is Bharatanatyam, but the aspirations are global. Hello. Yes. Hi, I'm Amit. I'm Amit. Uh, I wanted to ask you um, that, I mean, <clears throat> particularly in vocal uh, classical music, if one has listened to that for a long period of time, so the the tala and the the, the voice or the instruments uh, express a certain um, conjures a certain mood, but here with the dance. How do you, as a choreographer, define the relationship between the mudras that you use and your dancers use, and then the tala and then the voice? You know, it's, a, it's an interesting pedagogy that we have. We first teach only the movement of the feet. Then we teach the movement of the hand with the feet. And we stay with pure dance for a long time, almost three years. There is no Abhinaya attempted at all. So I think it's that pedagogy that comes to you. And the compositions that we do, I don't think there is no Abhinaya in pure dance. Because we saw today that much of the expression or what we wanted to say was with pure dance. So the two sections of pure dance and Abhinaya really blur for me. It's not as though this is Abhinaya and this is pure dance and keep the sections very different, which is what normally is taught to us. But I think in this production, it's really blurred because, and if you understood the pedagogy, you wouldn't have this question because uh, 
it's very clear when you see a traditional Bharatanatyam dance performance where a pure dance ends and Abhinaya begins. So the, the mudras, we have specific mudras for pure dance, we have specific mudras for the Abhinaya bits. So it's very well codified in the Natya Shastra and we go exactly by the rules. But as you know, there is a process. You first learn the basics, then you live with that technique. Then after that, I think you make the technique your own. And after that, you forget the technique and learn to fly. So I think that process of this whole journey that the dancer or the musician makes is exactly that. Because you're just taught in music the fundamentals and the basic, you know, what we call in Karnatak music, the as or the, the format of a particular raga. After that, how you paint the colors is different every day. And even in this production, if you see it tomorrow, it just might not be the same. Because there are lots of bits which are improvised. So improvisation is the key to Indian classical music and dance to create on stage. And that happens only after many, many years of rehearsal, practice and sadhana. So I think that uh, aspect I wanted to bring out that the, it, it's not all structured. It's all, all not, you know, because in the West you do say that a certain choreography is by so and so and you keep it that way but here in, in in indian music or dance it never remains i give it to her she makes it her home, her own and she takes the journey forward so it's not as though it's sacrosanct what i have taught her has to be done the way i taught her you know but the broad parameters and the grammar is defined for all do we have more questions Okay, let's make it the last two questions then. Uh, hello, thank you so much for a wonderful performance. And do excuse my ignorance, but whenever I've seen Bharatnatyam being performed in the past, it's always been an individual or solo dance. I've never seen a dance troupe or a Bharatnatyam composition in this manner. Would you care to comment? I just said uh, in the earlier question that yes, Bharatanatyam is a solo experience and uh, it's always been a solo experience for many years. But as many things have changed, we have moved to very large spaces of performance. We have many more dancers today. So I think the and spectacle is the uh, name of the game today, don't you think so? So I think all these factors have, um, I think, contributed to group work. My first group work, I think, was about 20 years back, 1998, 99 is when I experimented with group work. And um, as you know, we have all these heritage sites like the Ananya, um, old, that is the Purana Kila festival, you have the Konarak festival, you have the Khajuraho festival. These are all huge stages. These are all stages which are five times this space. And a solo dancer really gets lost in that huge space. To watch solo, you need a very, very, it was actually designed for a little courtyard in the temple. That's where it was performed earlier. So it is a very intimate dance form with ma not much of extrovertedness. It was a very introspective, very meditative dance, but it has evolved into a performing art today and we perform it on stage. And that also, sometimes it's a stadium that we are performing in. So I think all these have contributed to people exploring group work. And I have my wonderfully trained students and I want to use these multiple bodies and see how space and bodies work. And actually everybody starts off in a class because we have group classes and suddenly you see a movement being done by four people and you see, suddenly you make one of them turn and you see the body giving a completely different kind of a, uh, an angle to the whole thing and you see a new, new uh, way of interpreting it. Suddenly when you see it from a different perspective. So that's how everybody begins in group work and then I also began like that and then to see and explore. And today, you know, uh, light is a choreographic de device. So all this was not there earlier. We would just finish the production and say, light me up. 
But today we ask the light director to come and sit with us when we conceive and when we choreograph. So I think these are huge changes in the presentation technique that, um, um, and as I always say, the audience is not the same. The audience has changed. How do you expect the dance to remain where it is? It shouldn't. It should evolve. It should move on. And it should actually address young people like you and engage you. And that's the whole idea of an Ekanta. Hi, ma'am. I'm Kishita. Thank you for this wonderful performance. And thank you for being with us the whole Absolutely. day and putting no, up with us. Uh, ma'am, I think this is something we've never seen before, from the <coughs> movements to the positions. It was something so new to us. And in this process of changing and coming up with something so contemporary, have you ever, how difficult has it been? Like, have you faced criticism? Because it's really not easy getting away from the traditional part of it. Yeah. So how has it I think it's not sudden. It's a process, as I said, since 19... Um, um, 98, 99, it's a process of group work which has been happening in my head. And um, criticism, I would say I was very pleasantly surprised. We performed this at the Mecca of Culture Chennai this season and um, we got very good reviews. So I think people are also wanting something different now, something new. And I think a new aesthetic because uh, I do agree when many people say, uh, classical dance is boring. Because I do feel that somewhere, when you see the same thing again and again, if it's not really intense and if the dancer is not really into it, it can get very monotonous. So I think we're all looking for newer ways of expressing using the strong vocabulary of any of the classical dance forms. So criticism was there initially when I, when uh, you know people say, oh, why this this costume? You could have done the same production in a very traditional costume, for example. But I think when you're changing the whole aesthetic, I believe in changing everything. You know, the visual experience also has to be something refreshing, something different, something that brings uh, that just you just see it as a production. You don't see it as Bharatanatyam or Jaina philosophy. You just experience the whole thing live. That's all. Thank you. Well, I hope there are no more questions. Are there any? Thank you so much um, for taking all the questions and giving us so much of time. I want to thank the audience once again. I know it's dinner time, and many of you want to go and have dinner, otherwise it will be over. But you still stayed back and, and interacted and asked your questions. Thank you so much.